there. My name is Maddie, and I'll be your guide on this adventure through the marvelous inner tidal. We'll be looking in some interesting cracks and crevices. Expect to see some animals you didn't even know existed. Like this pile of rocks. Just kidding, it's actually a baby sea urchin. That's some pretty great camouflage. Some of you may know me as the Neuterbrink nerd, and it's true. I've been obsessed with these colorful sea slugs for years. Just look at them. There are over 3,000 different species. You can find them in tide pools, under docks, sometimes even washed up on the beach. But don't worry, if sea slugs don't tickle your fancy, there are plenty of other sea creatures we'll discover. Like some of my favorites, the echinoderms, or spiny skinned animals. And if you don't like spiny, there will be plenty of slimy, like this giant Pacific octopus that started it all. More on that later. So you might be wondering who I am, the person behind the voice. Well, to answer that, we have to start at the beginning. Whoa, not that far back. During my freshman year of college, I learned about sea star wasting disease. It sparked a passion for marine science, and since then, I've had the privilege of studying some pretty neat things. About two years ago, I started filming my life in the field, and I found I loved sharing the important research and information about our little friends in the sea. Until now, I've been using TikTok to share these stories. And after seeing how much love and interest there is for the inner title, I figured it was time to dig a bit deeper. If you follow along, you'll get the chance to learn more about marine science, the inner tidal and the life it harbors, and how to get into the field yourself. I'm excited to continue sharing this journey with you, so let's go tide pooling. for you to see a sea slug you've never seen before. You guaranteeing it? Yep. Today, we're exploring the tide pools around the Monterey Peninsula on the search for some sea slugs, also known as nudibranchs. Tide pools are part of the rocky inner tidal, a section of the beach that's covered in water during a high tide and exposed during low tides. The rocks, seaweeds, and remaining pools of water provide habitat for thousands of amazing sea creatures. The abundance of sea life here in Monterey has made it an epicenter of marine science for centuries. One of the most abundant animals in these tide pools are the sea anemones, and they're pretty easy to spot with their bright colorations. Sea anemones are related to jellyfish and have stinging cells in their tentacles. However, most species are harmless to humans, and their sting just feels like stickiness. If you were a tiny crab, you would not want to get stuck in these tentacles. Echinoderms, or spiny-skinned animals, are also pretty easy to spot because of their colorations and abundance, like these purple sea urchins. This is the test or shell an urchin leaves behind when it dies. There are also tons of these bat stars. Sea stars in general need water in order to move, so when they're out of water, they get frozen in place. But once they're back in a tide pool, you can observe them cruising around with their tiny tube feet. They don't move very fast, but if you're patient, you can see they actually cover a lot of ground. There are thousands of sea snails, and if you're lucky, you might even find an abalone. This is just the shell, but if you look closely, you can see it has other things living on it, like tiny barnacles. The holes in the abalone shell are for reproduction, removal of waste, and breathing. Sea snails are relatives of sea slugs, but so far, no luck on the mission to find a neuterbrank. Yes, last time, the time before I came in the morning. Now it's 
evening. There are no slugs. Well, they probably learn in the morning low tide to go out to deeper water. Or they get annoyed sitting in the hot pools all day. So they hide under rocks. So we didn't find any sea slugs today, but that's okay because we found lots of other cool things. And now we have a hypothesis about what these sea slugs might be up to. Perhaps they're more likely to be found in the morning when the temperatures are cool and they can be better hidden from predation and the elements. I'll be coming back to test this theory and I hope you'll join me on the way.